up, y'all? Let me get my camera together. Is that cool? Okay. Let me turn this down. CC whining. CC whining is the best. <clears throat> okay, y'all, just a moment. I have to write these things down because I am a talker and I don't want to go over 10 minutes. I hope you all can hear me. And I just got off work, hungry and oh. tired. I'm doing it now. And I have to make sure it stays under 10 minutes because so, from my understanding from last night, one oh, moment. Sorry about that. Um, from what I understand of last night or yesterday, that the topic for impact is why wait. And I believe Aaron chose me because I am a senior citizen that's a virgin. <laughs> now I'm 33, and um, yes, I am still a virgin. I have kissed before. I have um, not ever have had sex, oral sex, none of that. So I am a virgin. Yay! Okay, I'm going to have to turn this down. All right. Well, I gave you a little background of myself. I'm known as Mother Holiness, Queen La, Holy Rocker, to Aaron Godmo, or Queen. So, um, I wrote these things down, and I'm going to read you all what I wrote, because I tend to babble, which is probably what I'm doing now. Okay, a virgin. Someone who has never had sex. They're pure. They're unmixed. They haven't been infiltrated with nothing else. They're not um, a mutt. That Well, that's what pure means. You're not a mutt. You haven't been. You know all that. Okay. So, um, unmixed state, not mixed with semen, cum, slob, or disease from others. The definition from a metallurgy, I hope I'm saying that word right, when metal is mixed with something else, it becomes scrap. Think about that. Not in its pure form, which was the best form. So when you're pure, that's your best form. If something else is added, that means the purity, something from the purity has been taken away. So you're no longer pure. You can either become scrap or mud. I'm, and this this is for the virgins. I don't I don't want to offend anybody. I've also heard of like. There are different versions and versions and opinions of what a virgin is. I've heard of born again virgins that before you receive the Holy Spirit, um, you have sex. So since you came into the kingdom of God, you have, you know, um, what's the word? Something, celibacy, that you said you were not going to have sex anymore until you, you know, became married. So that's where the born again virgin thing came from. Some people think oral sex is not sex, but if you say the two words, one of the words is sex. So it's sex. So if you've had oral sex, typically you're you're not a virgin because you've had sex in your mouth, which is kind of gross. But hey, we'll float your boat. I forgot what I was talking about, but. Um, also, it says if the hymen has been broken by a penis, tongue, finger, or any other object, then most folks say you are no longer a virgin. Even if you're raped, you are no longer a virgin because that was stolen from you. And that's what rape is, is taking away from you. It, it, it can take away your virginity, your trust, your hope, your, um, you know, that's rape. Um, but if it was I say, my opinion, if it was unwillfully taken, if sex was not consented between the two adults, then, I mean, I would still say you're a virgin. That's just me. Uh, that's just my opinion. And, okay, why wait? Because God said to do so. And thank you. No, really, but he did say to do so. When the Bible, God's word, speak of sex, it always speaks of sex in an honorable manner. Not always, but it speaks of sex in an honorable man manner of two who are married. 
There were rapes in the Bible, deceit with sex, and one man had uh, another woman's husband killed because I think I believe it was Bathsheba and David, and he was looking at her taking a bath on the roof and lust. You know what I'm saying? Filled his loins and he went and had sex with this lady. She got pregnant. He had him killed. So one sin can always build on top and the sin can become bigger than what you want it to be. So sex, that's a sin if you're not married. And if you are married and you're committing adultery, that's a sin that can build. It can build lies and you know all of that. I'm going to try to say I'm focused. Um, let's see. They were raped in the Bible. Uh huh. Tiger Woods, who I am so sick of hearing of. Okay, I'm getting off the subject. This is supposed to be why wait. Okay. Sex before marriage is considered sexual immorality, right up there with homosexuality. First Corinthians six thirteen says, "Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord." And the Lord for the body Verse 18 says Flee sexual immorality Every sin that a man does Is outside the body But he who commits sexual immorality Sins against his own body Or do you not know that your body Is the temple of the Holy Spirit Who is in you The Holy Spirit is God God is Jesus Jesus is God Jesus is the Holy Spirit All three are one And you gonna defile Jesus? That's yeah. The Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. You were, God came in flesh. God doesn't like flesh at all. It's an enemy to Him. So He came down here on this ugh, dreadful earth. Put on flesh that he hates to be an example to you, to live holy and to show you all how to live, to show me how to live. So you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. So all of this, all of this beautiful lusciousness belongs to God. And God is in here. So you're sinning with your body having, you know, forn fornication. You're damaging God, I guess you could say in a way. Okay. Um, Second Corinthians 12 mentions fornication, which fornication is fornication is consenting sex involving somebody unmarried, sexual intercourse between two consenting adults who are not married to each other. That's what. Fornication is in Galatians five sixteen through twenty six speaks about things of the flesh and things of the spirit. Ephesians five and so read that Galatians five sixteen through twenty six. Read those verses, study those, get them into your heart. Ephesians five tells us that it is not even fitting for us, meaning that that ain't our sway. Is that what y'all say? Y'all college students, that ain't my swag. Or, you know, y'all say, oh, he, he got swag and blah, blah, blah. So, seeing that ain't our swag. And if y'all make a t-shirt, I want one. So, the Bible is telling us in Ephesians that that's not even fitting for us. That ain't, that ain't our swag. I like that. That don't even look good on you. It's too tight and your business is hanging out. This is nasty. So if it don't fit, just like, all right, I wear 18. You know I'm losing weight. What? So I'm going to go to Ashley Stewart and buy 14 and try to put that on with big old fat back meat hanging out. That don't. That's not fitting of me. That don't even fit me. So why would I put that on? So sin doesn't fit you. Fornication doesn't fit you. So why would you wear it? Why would you put that on? That ain't your swag. Why would, Jesus don't roll like that.